Hi friends and welcome to this final installment of the Ginu Slayer build. Yes, this is the video you guys have been waiting for. I know it's been a minute. If you haven't seen the first several videos of this build, you wanna stop and click the link right here and you'll see the, the first several videos, all the test runs. So anyhow, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I just finished sanding all the fairing compound down. It's not perfect, but it's gonna look really good with um, the paint that I'm putting on, especially considering I'm rolling it on. All right, so we're going to make this motor look a little bit better. Got the motor sanded down. So now what I'm gonna do, I basically sanded it down. It had a rattle can paint job. I sanded as much of it as possible off. Got it all wiped down. I'm gonna tape it up. I'm gonna spray this in 545. That's a all craft, all grip um, epoxy primer. So once I get it in the primer, then I'll let it dry overnight. Be able to sand it down and paint it tomorrow. All right, so we got the motor in primer. Let's take a look. Look at that. So what I did is I had it tilted up all the way, got all the nooks and crannies, tilted it to each side, um, did all my coats. So I've got three coats of the All Grip 40, All Grip 545 primer on there. Um, so now's the fun part. What color should I paint this motor? <laughs> Looks like we got some paint. Whoa. Oh, man. It's hard to tell. But this is a gray. It's a really light gray. A little bit darker than a Matterhorn white. The fairing job came out decent. You know? That's what I wanted. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. All right, so here we go, big day. We're gonna wrap this puppy up. So what I've done is I just roughly did a tape line. Um, what I wanted to do is, I wanna even the sides, they're a little bit off, or a lot of it off. But you can see here, uh, it's kinda hard to tell. So if I was wanting to be really detailed, I would do measurements, basically I'd go, Every six inches or so, I do a measurement up from probably the outside or the keel, the, the side of the boat, maybe the chine. I do a measurement up and then I'd come to the one side. So I'd measure the side that I like. And then on this side, I would just transfer all those marks, trim it, and then they'd match flawlessly. On this, I'm not doing that because, well, <laughs> it's not perfectly straight. You know, there's some unevenness um, you know, I didn't, when we laid this up and did it, um, I didn't 
build a frame to hold it and make it perfectly straight and symmetrical. And, you know, I was using used parts from this boat and that boat. So it's not perfectly square and straight, but I don't care. I mean, it's a fun skiff. So I'm just doing what I can do, eyeballing it. I'm going to trim this real quick. All right. So I just finished all of my prep, almost. What I did was I took the diamond tipped cut off right here. This cuts really well for fiberglass. I use that to trim my shear line, which is the, the swooping line. I'm happy with how that looks. I then took the belt sander right here. Dusty. Ran this till I got it all pretty straight. You know, I, I'm digging that. But mainly I just wanted to expose um, some fresh wood and you can see the laminations of glass, obviously. Um, and then I took my little grinder here with 36 grit. I knocked down some high spots. This would show up. There's another one. It's basically where my glass, when uh, Mauricio and I, when Maurice and I did this, this overlapped. So I'm just gonna do a little fairing wipe. Um, and I buzzed down the entire outside hard to see but so right now I'm gonna mix up some fairing compound I'm gonna do some nice tight wipes throughout just the spots that really need it you know I'm not trying to make this thing a showboat um, transom I did some grinding too so I'm just gonna wipe the bottom section you know if it's just a one wipe wonder so however good it gets with one wipe of fairing uh, one fairing wipe that's going to be good enough for me I'm going to then roll gel coat and because I'm rolling gel coat it's going to give it almost like a satinish semi-gloss finish with texture it'll hide a lot of the imperfections and honestly it'll look great it'll, it'll be durable and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see it in color all right so I've got my tight wipes so i really like this fgci fairing compound it's so easy to mix you know old school you'd mix up your own fairing compound this is ready to go it literally you mix some hardener and i got back here and it's a polyester product so you know, you use the same hardener you use for your resin. You barely need any. It kicks off. It's nice, creamy, smooth, no pinholes. Um, there's a link in the description if you want to buy this fairing compound or any of the products that I use. Support those that support you. FGCI is a big supporter of the channel. And I hope you go at least check out their website and uh, see some of their great products. One of the biggest announcements for this coming season of videos is that I have partnered with FGCI. FGCI is Fiberglass Coatings Inc. They're a company that provides number one, incredible customer service and knowledge, number two, a phenomenal product, and number three, incredible value. If you've watched some of my past builds and videos, you'll see that I've already incorporated FGCI products. I've been putting them to the test and I am absolutely in love with their products. There's an old saying that I pretty much have lived by, support those that support you. You can implement that to any part of your life, whether it's friends, family, um, but especially business. And FGCI has really stepped forward to help with these builds and projects. They want to see this channel grow and they want to see you grow. They want to see you tackle your DIY projects. I've got a link in the description of this video to their website. And let me tell you what, 
support them because they support you. They support this channel. They support the builds. I could not be happier to make this announcement to share with you guys FGCI. On with the video. This. Holy sh Could be it. Dude, it'll be close. <laughs> Look at these scores. Oh, man. Dude, that's a Mongo piece. Yeah. All right, so we are so close. What I'm gonna do now is install the rub rail. This puppy's ready. So this is what I'm using. I've got this big, it's a really rigid, um, a rigid plastic. So this is like a 20 plus foot long piece. I took this off a boat that had sunk. So this is a repurposed piece. I've got a couple pieces of it. So what I'm gonna do now is just, basically I'm gonna lay, have this sit over the edge. So I'm gonna trim basically right down here, right down all the way down the bottom. So I'll trim it and then lay it up. All right, so we've just concluded the build. We're getting ready for a test run. Let's go. I'd like to take this moment to thank you guys for watching this video. All of your support, your likes, your comments, your subscriptions. I appreciate you guys so much and all the channel love you guys share. So. Just wanted to say thank you. On with the video! Let's just look at the angle on that cavitation plate in comparison to the bottom of the boat. It's angled, it's just This is what we've been working for, our test run. Here we go, we're about to go full test run. So this trim being all the way down, is the motor's not even getting to where it needs to be. I don't even know the mile per hour right now, but. Oh well, do a couple more runs. Well, that's why they're called test runs. 
<laughs> Not what I was hoping for. Um, still a learning process. I mean, rookie move. Not having the pin for the trim position. It just murders speed. I mean, really, that's proof how important your motor setup, your trim, your motor height. Um, those are two really important factors when you're going for maximum efficiency, maximum speed. So I uh, paid the penalty right there. Um, you know, if we hit 35, I'd be surprised. You know, this thing's already been in the 40s with the old prop. Um, so, you know. Okay, so here's a big day. The Ginu Slayer is now going to a new home. I know that I haven't finished what I wanted to on it um, in terms of last test runs, but this is Alan. Hey, everybody. This is Lori. Hi. And they are going to give this boat the best new home. They're going to go for the test run. I've been promised they're going to film it. Um, yep. So Alan is into same stuff, free diving, spear fishing. Uh, the boat's gonna be in the Keys. They've got a cool place. Serious guys, if you want a guy that knows what's going on with boats and your chemicals and your pars, and this guy knows how to build a boat, he can take a boat that will, he can take a Bayliner boat and make it a scarab. So, or a, a scarab Maybe. skiff. So, I like it. I mean, if you just watch his videos and you see the work, and if you know anything about glass work and how it's laid out. Um, this is the guy that's going to build you a micro skiff and probably a lot faster than any GNU that you'll ever buy brand new. So I'm so happy you. with this boat, man. Thank you, Simon, for everything I'm you've stoked. done. I'm stoked. Good luck on your venture, and I'm going to be so happy with this boat. I promise you that this boat is going to get worked. So thank you very much, man. I appreciate all your hard labor into this boat. You're doing a commercial for me. Right on. There it is. You heard it. <laughs> well, my friends, that concludes the final video on this build. I know it's bittersweet. We wanted to see that 50 mile per hour run. You know, I really tried to, to get it done. I've gone months on this build since Maurice and I started. You know, it it's hard filming these, editing, uh, the time to go for these test runs. Uh, you know, I do this because I love doing these videos, but it is something I do on the side and is, is, uh, it consumes a lot of time. So I hope you've really enjoyed this build. We did end up with a, uh, hitting the mid forties on this skiff. So we got really close. What I can promise you, and there's no time frame on this, but I am going to meet with the new owner. We are going to do a test run together down in Key Largo. It probably won't be till the end of this summer and we can do that final test run for you guys. So keep an eye out, no promises when, but it will be in the future. So thank you again for watching. I appreciate you guys and see you next time.